Hey, how you doing? Welcome to another chapter of Comments from the Peanut Gallery. <laughs> hey, it's weird weather we're having. It's 27 degrees, it's the middle of January, and it's 99% humidity. The air is really heavy. But, in today's adventure, let's say, okay, you're willing to look at this and go, okay, maybe there was a Galilee gathering, and maybe, okay, and maybe, then you have a question, I do, <laughs> when, they, when they're all together, okay, Jesus got them to Galilee, he said, I will be there before you, come, <laughs> after I'm raised from the dead, come, so, all right, so, say thousands of them showed up there. What did he say? What did he tell them? What was the purpose of? And some of it can suppose, and well, this, that, or the other thing, or. But there is, in one, one arena that I have always been interested in. When the two, now this is after the resurrection, the two on the road to Emmaus. One of them, his name was Cleopas. I think his wife's name was Mary. She was amongst the Marys that were, when there's so many Marys, I think the Cleopas, the wife of Cleopas was among them as a Mary. Anyhow, he was one of the two on the road to Emmaus. And this was after the resurrection, the first day, okay, Jesus arose very early in the morning, first day of the week. And the same day, the two were on the road to Emmaus, um, distance-wise, they give that, it's like seven, seven and a half miles. And Jesus joined with them. And what did he do as they're talking? <laughs> At first he said, oh, fools and slow hard. Why didn't you believe all the prophets? Okay. Why didn't you believe all of the prophecies about what's taking place right now? <laughs> and it is written that he went to the scriptures <laughs> And beginning with Moses, he went through prophecies, expounding on the prophecies. And, oh, I wish I... Oh, if I could only know what he said. Oh, to those on the two on the road to Emmaus. <laughs> kind of silly. I go, hey, hey, buddy. He told you what he said. He said, beginning with Moses and all of the prophets. You got that? He expounded on all of the prophecies. You know, I can look at those and I can know what he told those two guys. Because it says, beginning with Moses and then all of the prophets. And you go, okay. You know, there's, by some counts, okay, as people go through the Old Covenant, and I had, I had, I got a printout. I went to one of these sites where you can go, Old Testament prophecies about Jesus on this earth. Okay, punch that in, do search, and it comes up with this stuff. And I printed out one of the lists. 300, they had 365 prophecies on that list about Jesus walking on this earth. I started looking at them going, wow. And the thing, unique thing about a prophecy, well, there's lots of aspects to it, but one of the things that caught my attention is how every prophecy narrows down how it can be fulfilled. Like, born in Bethlehem. Oh, born in Bethlehem, the city of David. Okay, well, there's only so many people in all of time that have been born in Bethlehem, so that excludes everybody else. Or called out of Egypt. Okay, remember where Joseph, Mary and Joseph, fleeing Herod, Herod was gonna kill all the kids, which he killed a lot of them to get the one but that he missed. He missed Jesus, but he killed a lot of others, murdered little kids, and that one, two, maybe three years old, slaughtered a bunch of them. Anyhow, so they went to Egypt to escape. 
and then Kylie came back from Egypt. Uh, an, uh, an angel appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, do this and this and this and this and that. So they left and then they came back. So that's another prophecy. So how many people have been, oh, that the Savior, Messiah, called out of Egypt? Well, okay, that narrows it down further. One that's always been interesting to me is the sold for 30 pieces of silver. And you start looking at that prophecy, or it's okay, the prophecy goes, it's sold for 30 pieces of silver, and then that the money was thrown back into the temple and came out to purchase a potter's field where people, <laughs> poverty people, didn't have a place to be buried, they would be buried in that field. And that's all in the prophecy. I'm going, <laughs> that is amazing, because you look at Judas. Judas got the 30 pieces of the silver to betray Jesus. He did his deal and betrayed him, and he regretted what he did. He took the money, went back to the temple, threw it to the priests, and said, no, let him go, let him go. And he said, oh, and then the priests go, no, we're not going to let him go. No way. And... They said, we can't keep this money because it's blood money. We can't keep it. So they bought the pot potter's fields with it. <laughs> and that's where they buried strangers. But the fulfilling of the prophecies and can go through these things one by one. And it's all so amazing. There's lots of prophecies about his, the way he would die. Uh, in doing what he did and how he was executed and uh, or let's see there's, there's one that I've always let's see surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows yet we did esteem him stricken smitten of God and afflicted but he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our, our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was laid upon him and with his stripes we were healed all you like all we like sheep have gone astray each of us turned unto our own way and the lord has laid on, upon him the lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all another now i know i didn't quote that exactly correct but i got the thought and the intent right but, so the prophecies are amazing so this is some at least i think it's safe to say at least one of the things that that he expounded upon at the Galilee gathering. I'm sure there was other stuff, but I'm quite confident because he spent so much time and the first thing that he did with those on the road to Emmaus was take them to the prophecies, hundreds of them, about his death, burial, resurrection, hundreds of prophecies expounded on them and <laughs> And then what? <laughs> I'm not sure, and I would only be guessing, and maybe I'll spend some time guessing what he told them. But for now, this is really awesome. This one, I'm quite sure, expounding on the prophecies, like 365, and they are very findable, you know, in the time frame that we are. People have put them together in lists well, we can go and look at them, and each one, <laughs> the, the chances, like, okay, you get to the chances of one person fulfilling all of those. Say, for example, uh, born of a virgin. And then what people do, I spoke before about the paraphrase and stuff and how people get in there and muddy the waters and swirl things around and and distort you know take it okay in one spot was that born of a virgin okay in the jw bible okay because i went and looked a friend of mine when i was a teenager he said oh uh i'm interested in uh, joining the jw church uh, what can you tell me about it so i got my hands on a jw bible and i started going through it and i found the place where 
the angel came to Mary and said, uh, you're going to have a son, okay? The Virgin Mary, Virgin Mary, okay? <laughs> Born of a virgin. And what I found in the JW Bible was that it says, her response to the angel was, how can this be since I am not having relations with a man at this time? I go, oh, that's insinuation, they're saying, and that the way that they have muddied the waters and swirled stuff around, that she had been having relations with a man before, and that she wasn't a virgin, and you know, but that is an example of what can be done in a paraphrase or a, when they start to get away from an actual translation and where they actually translate the words, like the closest one I think is the Geneva Bible and next in line would be the King James. <sighs> Taking definitions from, oh, I'm starting to ramble again. Anyhow, <laughs> it's supremely awesome. You know, this is one of the things, supremely awesome, the prophecies that Jesus brought them to, because each one narrows the playing field. You know, the, the chances of one person fulfilling them all is like one in umpteen billion, trillion, because it's... <sighs> That's where he brought them. One of the places. One of the things they talked about, so... Eh, fantastic. Enjoy the journey.